as we continue our journey through the songbook. Tonight we will look at another one of the hymns of the faith. And that is the song that we just sang, A Blessing in Prayer. If you go over to Ephesians chapter 5 and look at verse 20, our brother Paul says, Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blessings that we have in prayer are granted because through Jesus, we have access to the Father. And so this song of blessing and prayer mentions some of the benefits that you and I can gain when we bow our heads in prayer. What a beautiful thing it is to be able to boldly go before the throne of grace. This song, the text, the words, if you will, were written by a Eliza Edmonds Hewitt. And then sometime later, the, the melody was posed by William James, William James Kirkpatrick. And so tonight, as we think about this song, again, as we do each and every time we study one of these hymns, we want to very simply point out from the verses of the song itself what we can gain and what we can learn. First of all, in the first stanza, it teaches us that prayer brings us rest or brings rest to our souls. When I think of this passage, I can't help but to think of Matthew chapter 11, beginning in verse 28, where Jesus gives that great invitation where he says, Come unto me, all ye who are weary, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When I think about that, I understand that for the primary part, Jesus is inviting us to become his, his child, to become his disciple, one who will appropriate his blood in our life through baptism. I understand that. But when you and I are baptized into Christ, we receive the rest that Jesus promises. And part of that rest is knowing that we can go to him in prayer. If we go back into the Old Testament and we look at Exodus chapter 25, and you can begin there in verse 17 and read down through verse 22, the Old Testament tells us why we can find rest in Christ. It is simply because he is our mercy seat. If you remember under the Old Testament sacrificial system, the presence of God was found in the Ark of the Covenant. And part of the Ark of the Covenant was that mercy seat. And we know that each year that the priest, the high priest, would go in and he would offer sacrifice. And the blood would be sprinkled on the mercy seat. Jesus became our mercy seat when he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. Because in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, beginning in verse 11 down through verse 14, it is there that the Hebrew writer tells us that just as the blood of the goat or the bull was brought to the Old Testament mercy seat to make atonement for the people, so Jesus' blood was shed for the atonement of all mankind. And you think about that, and I've mentioned this many times, the blood of Jesus, it flowed all the way back to those who lived under the old law. It covers those who are living today, and his blood will continue to cover those who will live for him in the future. Brethren, prayer brings rest to our souls. From the second verse or second stanza, you will see that prayer brings us grace to help us in our times of need. 
Our sermon this morning dealt with waiting upon the Lord so that we could mount up with wings like eagles. When I think about that mounting up, I think about how prayer brings grace to our needs. If you turn over to the book of Hebrews chapter 4, and I'm not going to read every verse that is there, but I want to read a few of these. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 4, and let's look at verse 14 down through verse 16. Notice the scripture says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was at all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Think about, if you will, what Jesus went through as he lived his life. Were there times in his life that he had times of need? And someone says, Brother Ray, Jesus was the Son of God. God was always going to be there for him. But that's not what the scripture teaches. The scripture teaches while he was God in the flesh, he was also man in the flesh. And yes, God could have met his every need just because he was his son. But I believe reading this passage tells me that he went through times of need so he could sympathize with us. We never need to feel like Jesus cannot understand what we go through. We can be assured that no matter what happens in life, that he will always be there for us. If we go back to the book of John, chapter 15, and we look at verse 13 down through verse 15. Notice it says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. Why would Jesus come and share the words from the Father? Because he wanted us to be his friend. And because we are his friend, the last part of verse 2 says that we can cast our cares and burdens on him. Isn't that what God wants us to do? Doesn't the Bible say that he wants us to cast all our cares upon him? Brethren, I'm going to tell you tonight, when we think about a blessing in prayer, you and I will never be able to bear our burden alone. We may reach out to our brethren to help us bear our burden, and yes, they can help ease our burden. But even though we have each other, if we leave God out of the picture, we cannot bear our burden. No matter how much, no matter how much someone tries to help us, without God, we cannot bear our burden. It takes all of us. It takes the grace of God to help us in our time of need. From stanza number three, yes, I know you're going to look up there and you're going to see that really big $100 word. Prayer brings equanimity. 
in our minds. So it says, brother, right? What does that word equanimity even mean? It very simply means that we can have peace of mind. It is a balance in our mind, knowing that we can obtain true peace through prayer. Sometimes our lives, are they not filled with songs of joy? How many times do you find yourself going through your day when life seems to be going so well and you begin to sing? It's because song brings joy to you. It is this balance. If you look at the psalmist, he says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to, joyfully to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Do you see what that says? That passage tells us that we should go before the Lord singing. Why? Because God is everywhere. Whether it be in the heaven above or the earth below, to the east, to the west, wherever you go, God is there. That ought to bring this peace of mind to us, knowing that no matter where we go, God is there for us. But not only do we sing the song filled with songs of joy our life, other times think about your life. There are times when our life is full of sadness because of the ills we face and the strife that goes on around about us. Go back to Psalm 4. Psalm 4. And look at verses 1 through 8. David writing here says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness, you have relieved me when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord were here when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increase, I will both lie down in peace and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Do you see how knowing that God is there in times of trouble and distress that we can have this peace of mind when you think about what David is saying, I like verse 1. Hear me when I call. I think there's a song in our song book that starts out with those words. Hear me when I call, O God, my righteousness. David's saying, I trust you. 
I know, God, that you're going to be there for me. You're going to bring this balance into my life where I can have this peace of mind. And yes, we know according to the book of James, chapter 1, verse 13 down through verse 15, that the scripture says, let no man, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. God always has our best interest in his mind. God has given you, God has given me the ability to choose to do what is right and what, or what is wrong. That began all the way back in the beginning of time, did it not? God gave Adam and Eve, how many commands did he give them? Was it one? When God said you can eat of every tree in the garden except this one. In the day that you eat of the fruit of that tree, you shall surely die. One commandment. And in that one commandment, God says to Adam and Eve, now, you make a choice. You can choose not to eat and you will live perpetually. <clears throat> or you can eat and death will come your way. And you know what Satan did? Satan does as Satan does. He painted a picture that was too good for Eve to pass up. He made that fruit look so appealing. And Eve ate. God didn't do that. God didn't make her do it. She chose. Even Satan didn't make her do it. She chose of her own free will. But you and I, we have that same temptation every single day. We face it. We see it. How do we react? Let us realize God is there every step of the way. And then you come to the fourth stanza. Prayer brings us peace in our hearts. What kind of peace does God offer? Is it some temporary fleeting peace? Or is it as the Apostle Paul writes in Philippians 4, it is a perfect peace to those who have the type of relationship with him. So when they make their request known, the answer will be given. God wants us to have peace but not just peace he wants us to have perfect peace <clears throat> you know also it is through our prayers that we can receive gifts from God that demonstrate his love for us as our father and as we as his children go back to Matthew chapter 7 I want to look at that. Matthew chapter 7, begin in verse number 7. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount says, Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or, what man is there among you if his son asks for bread will give him a stone? 
Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a serpent. If you then be evil, <laughs> if you then be evil, yeah, Jesus is telling them that day, you are evil. You have sin in your life. He says, if you are that, and you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Interesting, Jesus brings that out, that golden rule, and he says, this is the law and the prophets. Do you realize a little bit later on, he goes into greater detail and explains what that really means? You remember Jesus was asked the question, what is the great commandment? And he answered, did he not? He said that you should love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And just for good measure, I don't think it was just for good measure. I think he's further defining the golden rule. And he says, and the second is likened to it, that thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. For on these two commandments, are you ready? Hang all the What's it say? Law and the prophets. Jesus further explained what the golden rule was when he was asked about the great commandment. It is the law. It is the law. So we know that God is going to treat us better than our fellow humans are going to treat us. We know what to do to take care of ourselves. But oftentimes we don't know what to do to take care of someone else. Number three under that, we can have access to God in prayer as long as life on earth for us remains. While we are looking forward to that home far away when we will be able to praise him forever and ever. Go over to Romans chapter 5 and look at verse 1 and verse 2. Romans chapter 5 beginning in verse 1 and verse 2. get there. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Paul says we rejoice in this hope to be able to see the glory of God at the end. So when you think about this song of blessing in prayer, the chorus continues to remind us of the wonderful blessings we have. Brother, there should never be a time in our life when we cannot go to the Father and speak with him. There is never a time when we should lack confidence to go to him in prayer. So we need to remember, no matter what may happen to us in this life, there is always a blessing in prayer. Tonight, is there one in our midst who needs to obey the gospel of Christ? Putting him on baptism so the Father will add you to the church. To number you with those who will be redeemed at the end of time. To spend eternity with God forever in heaven. Or perhaps there is one among us tonight who has walked away from God. 
Maybe you haven't truly understood the blessing that prayer brings. I, 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 I kind of hesitated to pr present this lesson because I know how you folks are about the power of prayer. I, I know that you are confident and you realize the blessing of prayer. But if there's one here who's turned back to the way of the world and you need to come home tonight repenting and confessing of sin, we encourage you to do so. Let us share the blessing of prayer with you as we can pray to the Father on your behalf. Tonight, if you have a need, we pray you come while we stand and while we sing.